Hi folks, today is our Throwback Thursday episode, so we're going to be taking a look at how our patio and paths around the garden are getting on, so stick around and we'll take a look. So you have to bear with the wind out here. The patio and the paths, they went in about three years ago this summer. So they've had a good test, they've been under you know, nearly a foot of snow, they've seen high temperatures in the summer, so they've kind of seen the extremes and I think now's a good enough uh, point in time to take a look and see how they're holding up. We'll start with the patio, you'll have to excuse the wind today, true uh, British summer on the way I think. So the patio is a limestone product, all these are products from Stone Market, so they're, uh, you know, the premium end, we kind of made a bit of an investment on them. Uh, but I think it's paid off. These are, uh, yeah, a tumbled limestone, so they're a bit softer than your normal sort of bog standard slabs. Uh, they've they've kind of just, yeah, you know, it's one of those tactile things. But uh, they're all a similar colour, so it's not like a mix and match type uh, patio pack, apart from the sizing. The other thing I did do on this patio, which a lot of people ask about, is yes, we staggered the joins everywhere, following the pattern guides that you can get with the pack but I do have a continuous line along here and that was intentional simply because under here, when we get around to it, we'll be building our oak gazebo over here. At this point, at this line, there is a changing gradient. I didn't want the whole thing uh, sloping. I mean, it does, I have put a bit of a fall on that section, but it's the skirt, the exposed bit around where the gazebo is gonna go. Um, I've just tapered a little bit more off. So that's why that's there and you don't really see it by the time stuff's on here, but if you were doing conventional patio, yes, you'd kind of break all of the joins. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much detail because you can just simply go back and watch the videos of it being installed, but the sub base is a decent amount of sub base compacted in different layers. That's a type one sort of crushed uh, stone to dust type uh, material. And then we laid the patio on a full mortar bed. So there's no dot and dab, there's no sand and cement, loose dry. This is just all on a complete um, mortar bed mix. So each one was individually better down, tapped down, and the four put into place. And it, not a single bit of movement has happened over the whole of the patio. So I can only you know, stand by the way it, that we put it in. Now, one of the most queried uh, items of the install is the fact that we use a resin pointing uh, products for this rather than a traditional sand and cement uh, pointing. Now, I, some of these products have got poor reviews uh, not this particular brand this is the fast point um, product some of them can like the coloring's not great or sometimes they just you know not as strong as they should be this has um, I've pressure washed it a few times I know that's probably not advised but it's held up fine and sit for the pure simpleness of brushing it in hosing it in striking it off I definitely go this route again um, yes, it's much more expensive. I say much more. It's more expensive than just knocking up some sand and cement. But, you know, it's one of those things that if you've spent hundreds of pounds on the stone, why scrimp out on the, uh, on the, on the pointing? And even if you do use sand and cement, you can get a really good, decent finish, but you do risk, especially when you're using it on sandstone patios uh, or other stone types, you can really stain up the slabs if you're not careful. Whereas this product, you just literally, the whole thing you drench before you start so that nothing sticks to it um, and nothing stains it. Now, I don't really want to start chipping it up to prove my point. So you'll just have to kind of take my word for it. But it's it dries, you know, very solid. And while it is probably a little bit more rough, even once you've striked it up, a little bit more rough to finish, uh, to, to touch, it's certainly not uh, that noticeable. Whereas, it, I mean, if you did sand and cement, you can really kind of smooth it off. Um, there's a bit of texture to it, but nothing huge. Now, one thing to mention is this started off, this is the buff color product from Fastpoint. And I'd say it was probably, a, I'd have to look back at the footage, more of a beach sand sort of color to start with, uh, or at least a, a kind of gray buff. Whereas now it's, it's pretty gray and it's darkened down. And it does actually clean up when you clean the patio it does lighten back up again so i think this is probably more to do with the fact that it's on the north side of the house and over the winter we've got chickens and ducks and you know it probably builds up a little bit 
so that's probably more dirt than coloration, but it does get a little bit darker. So maybe bear that in mind uh, if you're picking through the colors. I'll come back and touch on the timber frame project in a minute, uh, but let's take a look at the paths. But before we do that, it's time for some of our subscribers projects that have been sent in this week. So first up is a gazebo pergola build from Knott's Home Reddo on Instagram. He built it like a pergola and then he's gone ahead and put a polycarbonate roof over the top to uh, make sure it'll manage the British weather. Okay, next up is a scaffold board deck, uh, which was built by Simon and his boy Oliver. They've done a great job there and also managed to build a table and potentially benches underneath there as well. All looking very good. Next onto Renovating Hillview on Instagram. They've built this really cool uh, bespoke shed, a little bit different from your bog standard shed and really loving the design, especially that waney edge cladding and the curved roof, proper shepherd's hut style. Right, we'll head back over to the garden, have a look at the paths, uh, but there will be more subscribers projects later in the video. So this has got to be one of my favorite projects to date, doing the path, or the paths all the way down through the garden. And it's, it's something I'm pretty, pretty proud of, uh, bearing in mind it was the first time I'd laid a patio or a path. Now these are sandstone. They are a bit more of a mix of colors. Um, and again, they're laid on a full mortar bed, kind of, around 30 to 50 mil. You'll also notice, I'll get the lower angle in a minute, but I put a bit of a camber on the, on the path and it's not immediately noticeable, but as you come up from the, the lower garden and it's basically your eye level, you really do notice it and it makes a huge difference. Um, I spotted it on some of the paths around um, in Portugal when we were there, the sort of cobbled streets and there's something quite nice about it. And of course it does just help shed the rain off it. I've just, <laughs> I have just noticed some footprints where I've trod emulsion down the path, but I think it should come off. But even if you decided to point up the patio in sand and cement, when it comes to the path, it's definitely worth the extra, um, extra money to go with the brush in because there's just so many joinings, you know, uh, joints to, to fill. It, it just sped things up. But also because it stains sandstone quite a bit, sand and cement, this was a nice way to go, uh, knowing that we wouldn't have to worry about that. Now, neither the patio or the path we've used any sealants at all on. Um, and when Stone Market came down to shoot those videos with us three years ago, they, they were along the thought process of, you know, it's a very resilient material. It's millions of years old. It's going to stand the test of time if it's laid properly and it's decent material to start with. Um, but if you do use a sealant of any form on it, they, they did recommend a few. I kind of like the way that this goes. This path is, is quite mellow in coloration, but as soon as it rains, it transforms to kind of almost different colors. Whereas if you were to have that wet look type sealant or something like that on it, I'm not sure I'd, I'd, uh, I'd be up for it. And also a lot of those just put a film on the top, which I guess can leave the stone very damp below. This, one of the tests for stone when they were talking about the quality is how quick it dries out. This stuff, you can get it wet and within two, three minutes, it's bone dry again. It's, you know, it's very good at, uh, at releasing that. So we have none of it algaes up or mosses up. If we head to the bottom, you see the steps I built with the same limestone as the patio. Now, because the steps have a bit of an overhang, I had to use sand and cement here. So there's a bit of a comparison. And again, it's held up fine. Uh, so you've got the sand and cement there across to uh, the resin version there. The resin just wouldn't have uh, on here. Oh, it's pretty unsupported, so you get a bit more strength out of the sand and cement for that overhang. The lower path is a little bit more messy and needs a good clean, but we'll blame the chickens and ducks. Whilst we're here, let's have a look at the oak because it's one of our most popular projects and it's all part of the same patio project. So the whole patio project was centered around this oak retaining wall when we started before we laid the patio comes along, returns back in that way towards pizza oven. And there's a lower section. And of course we've got the sloping uh, garden here. There's loads of videos on this install. Uh, being that they're on their flat sides, they're super strong and the interlocking as well. And remember, al although I did put some stainless steel screws in as I went up, we then drove those kiln dried uh, oak pegs or oak dowels all the way through the lot. There is no way you're getting this out without 
you know, a chainsaw. Um, it's, it's completely locked the whole lot together. Everything shrunk onto those dowels and it's simply one piece now. Held up very well and any shrinkage, yeah, we're three years in now, um, they're pretty exposed here. Any huge movement would have been done by now. And pleased to say that there's not a huge amount of um, splits or cracks, nothing really showing on the side or, or much movement. The top being that it's more exposed, you get those sort of um, typical splits like you do in any oak frame or oak structure. Yes, they're on the top, but as quick as moisture can get in there and rain can get in there, it can get out. Um, the temptation is to try and fill those those cracks with an epoxy or uh, or whatever, and I just I think that's probably going to lead to more issues. So I'm going to leave that there. So let's have a look at the finish. Well, we use Osmo UV oil and we use it in an oak colour, which is why it's this sort of golden brown colour. Vertical surfaces is what the product is designed for and pretty much flawless. On, on the vertical surface, the product's held up fine. Um, it, it obviously sheds water better and the colour is, is held up as well. The top, however, um, Osmo UV oil is not designed for horizontal surfaces and we knew that at the time of using it. Um, it can be, you know, on top of a gate or something would be one thing, but where it's actually sat on top um, and there's water sat on it, it's not really designed for that. So, yes, it's worn off uh, more there, but we walk on here as well because it's kind of like a step. Simply maybe uh, 120 grit and then a 180 to take that top back and clean it off and then another coat on there. We'll be doing that in the next week or two and it'll just jump back to life. This one thing to mention though is when I spoke to one of the reps uh, through another, through I think it was Wood Finishers Direct, they were talking about the fact that if you use Osmo UV oil outside, if you use a clear, yes, it can protect the UV rays from graying the wood, but if you use a tinted color, um, it actually has a lot more of a barrier for the UV than just the clear. So yes, you're already coloring the wood slightly, um, but you're giving even more protection by using a tinted. Uh, I think that's true, at least, so uh, that's one, th one thing to mention. So that's the follow-up on the patio and the path and the oak sleeper retaining wall. Let's head inside and we'll look at what some of you have been up to. Okay, back to our subscribers project for this week. Chris had sent in these images from his uh, recent renovation of a lounge and dining room. Uh, they've knocked through the two really similar to what we've ended up with at our place. Uh, restored an old fireplace as well, uh, but punched through the wall there and made a really nice feature of the, the two rooms together. Nice picture rail around the top and really good period look to it. So good work there. Then Scott sent in this. He's just picked up a uh, pocket hole jig, a Craig K5. And his first project has been to build this uh, this built-in alcove unit. And we've got a few of these on our list, on our to-do list here, so uh, that's inspired us. Andrew sent in this collage of his bathroom renovation, uh, full kind of retail, full decorating. Good stuff going on there. Then on to Sam, he's done a, a dressing room, uh, which I guess is attached to a bedroom. Uh, but done a really cool drop ceiling lighting uh, feature going on there and basically this is the sort of project I cannot show to Joe otherwise uh, it's going to be added to the list. And last but not least Dan has been busy with a newborn baby as well but also been busy doing his walk-in pantry slash man cave and uh, done a really good design. He's been busy making all the doors up and also I think he's an oak there for the drawers, I believe, or for the cabinets, face frames, and of course, space for the beer fridge or wine fridge or whatever your tipple. Well, I promise you a timber frame uh, follow up. This is the site for our next oak frame. Uh, it's going to be using the saddle stones, which are already in under here somewhere, uh, just to stop the kids whacking themselves on them. So, there's our solid granite saddle stones sat on a huge concrete. Well, not huge, but a decent sized concrete pad underneath the patio. And there's four of those ready to take the 150 by 150 posts. Unfortunately, I did this before I knew much about timber framing. And I left myself 
a 4.8 meter span at the front and I don't really want to jump up to crazy sized timbers for the uh, for the top beam so even with the the braces in either side I'm probably at about 3.8 3.9 for our clear span in the middle it might be asking a bit too much from just a six by six um, oak beam but to keep the dimensions nice and even I think I will go ahead with a a 6x6, 150, 150, beam along the top and then I'm going to buy a steel plate and we'll bolt that into the back of it just as a bit of extra bracing. Now to start with I'm going to put the rafters on and just use it like a, a pergola but I want to make sure that there's strength there if we want to just deck it out and put a roof on there so um, so that's what I'm going to do but essentially the design is done just got to get the timber here and get the time. Back here, I finally made a start on the bathroom tiling and getting things lined up for the shower that's going in there. That will be kind of next week's aim to get that done. And of course, we're finishing off the last finishing touches on our vegetable garden. Now, this is the project which will be released as our Saturday video. It has been a really fun one and we're trying to keep it a hidden project until Saturday. So there's been a few sneak peeks on Instagram. But it'll be uh, the big release on Saturday evening. But it's a great feeling to have some plants in the ground and some food growing ready for the summer. As I said last week, if you want any of your projects featured in these Thursday videos, then the best way to do that is to email us at restorationcouple at gmail.com as doing it through Instagram or Facebook just becomes a little bit tricky to keep on top of. So the videos to the sides are going to be the patio playlist and the path video. Uh, so you can go and check out those, which will cover what I mentioned in a little bit more detail. But that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.